Okay, following up on my previous video about the Oculus render resolution slider and the Steam render resolution slider and how they work kind of in tandem and how one affects the other. Most popular question in the comments was, Carl, how does those two render resolution sliders affect virtual desktop and the performance of virtual desktop? If we put our Oculus slider at 1.0x or 1.7x, is that gonna affect the experience we get over virtual desktop, over the wireless connectivity option that Quest 2 users have? And the same for Steam VR. If we go into Steam VR and we adjust the render resolution up or down, how does that affect the experience in virtual desktop? The answer is, it's, oh, it's a two part answer. <laughs> the easiest answer is they don't affect it, neither of them, because the Oculus software isn't used at all when it comes to virtual desktop. That render resolution slider in the Oculus software is for your link connection over the cable. So it has no effect on virtual desktop whatsoever. The render resolution slider in Steam, the global setting, not the one per game, the global setting, um, because in my opinion, there's no need to change the one on the, the per game uh, render resolution because most games, or in fact all games, have an in-game option for adjusting the resolution. So you may as well just, when you're in your game, <laughs> go to the options, go to graphics, and if you need to adjust it, you can do it there. So I don't really see the point in having the the, uh, the Steam VR per game one, but the global, I mean, your opinion may vary. Um, the global setting, like we spoke about before, if you were to go into Steam VR before connecting your Quest over virtual desktop and adjust that render resolution slider, and then you put your Quest on, you load a virtual desktop and you connect it, what you've done in that slider makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. Because what happens is, when you connect virtual desktop in the Quest, to the PC streamer app, they talk to one another. At that moment, the streamer app reports to Steam VR that there is a headset connected and it reports a resolution back to Steam VR. Prior to that, if you were to have loaded up Steam VR, um, you'll notice it says no headset found or headset disconnected or whatever the hell it says. Um, so what you do at that point would make no difference. Once you've connected the headset, your Quest 2, via virtual desktop and the streaming app. Then if you load Steam VR, obviously it shows your headsets connected. And then if you go into the, the global render resolution settings and adjust the slider at this point, that does make a difference to what, pardon me, that does make a difference to the output in virtual desktop. Because at that point it's connected, it sees the headset. Now, um, virtual desktop has three render resolution settings of its own, low, medium, and high. This is within virtual desktop. So if you're in your headset, you bring up virtual desktop, you look, and you go to the streaming tab in the bottom left-hand corner of the list, and then you look up to the top left-hand corner, you've got render resolution, which is, and also the video resolution. So that's the resolution your game is rendered at, and the resolution that it is then encoded to as a video and sent over Wi-Fi to your headset. So low, medium, and high. The three settings, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you what those resolutions exactly are and compare them to the equivalent setting in the Oculus software. So low in virtual desktop is 1728 by 1824. Now the nearest resolution in the Oculus software is 1.1x, which is 1808 by 1840. They don't quite match up perfectly, but these are the closest I could find by adjusting the slider. So just to give you an idea, because we all know with our Oculus slider that most of us can't run 1.7 because we just don't have powerful enough GPUs to do it. Most of us probably hover somewhere around the 1.3, 1.2, 1 1.3 mark, depending what graphics card you've got. So it's useful for you lot to know what low, medium, and high actually represent in sort of tangible terms that we already understand. It makes it easier to set things up. So that's what low is. Medium, 2016 by 2112. The closest this comes to in the Oculus slider is 1.3x at 2064 by 2096. So they're, they're within sort of 50 or so pixels of each other most times on both the X and Y axis. Again, it's as close as I could get. If you go one up or one down, they're even further away from the virtual desktop. 
settings. And so then finally, the high setting in virtual desktop is 2496 by 2592, which is closest to 1.6 in the Oculus software, 2568 by 2608. So you can see now, most of us are probably either gonna to wanna to run on low or medium in virtual desktop, because unless you've got something like a 3090, you're gonna to struggle to run on high. I actually thought I could in the beginning because I was getting a reasonable experience um, in the Oculus Home, and then once I loaded up something like Half-Life Alex, it was just, no, just constantly stuttering. So for me, I tend to run with my 20, see, so my 2080 that I've got upstairs here, I run on medium, and this allows me to, which is equivalent to about 1.3x, and that's, that's funny because if I use Link, I use 1.3, that's, that's what I have it at, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, and that allows me to have the in-game settings on sort of a medium to high level. So I've got quite a lot of the visual fidelity on, you know, the shadows, decent resolution, textures, good lighting and, and what have you. It's a nice balance for me. If I was to run high in virtual desktop, I'd very much have to come down to almost the lowest settings, depending on the game, to be able to do that. And if I put it on low in virtual desktop, which to be honest, doesn't even look that bad, I mean, it's noticeably nowhere near as sharp as medium or high, but when you then crank up the in-game settings, and this will include some form of anti-aliasing or super sampling, which is the same thing, um, depending on how it's done, it doesn't look too bad because you've got all your, you know, you put everything in-game up to ultra, and you've got all those nice effects on that really make the game look polished, it's just not quite as sharp. So I think for most of us, we'll be hovering between the low or the medium setting and then playing with our in-game settings to get them up as high as we can. And you know, once you're in there, it's, it's a pretty good experience. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's for me with my 2080. My downstairs computer, because me and Katie both have Quest 2s, and we like to do multiplayer, that's got a 1080 Ti in that computer downstairs, and the graphics, the graphics card, the CPU is a, it's gonna be slightly confusing, it's a Ryzen um, 1600 AF, R5 1600 AF. Now that doesn't mean it's a generation one Ryzen chip. The 1600 AF was a weirdly named generation two Ryzen chip, but it sounds like it's generation one. It's the equivalent to a Ryzen 2600, weirdly enough. It performs exactly the same. We, none of us really know why AMD put these chips out, but they, they come out, and they come out about 30 quid cheaper than a 2600, so they're about 85 pounds, and there was a very limited run, and they all just sold, and I managed to grab one. So, that, so basically, downstairs has got a 1080 Ti and a 2600, Ryzen 2600. Now, for, for me, on that computer, 16 gig of RAM, I have to run on low and then the in-game settings on high. If I put virtual desktop up to medium, I just get a little bit more stuttering every now and then than what I would like. And I think that's purely because my 2080 is just that little bit faster than the 1080 Ti. And my 3800 in here is also just a, you know, well, it's quite a bit faster than the 2600 or equivalent, the 1600 AF that's downstairs. So that gives you a little bit of a example sort of based on two different hardware configurations where one's having to go on low and one's having to go on medium. Neither of them will run on high unless you're running something really simple, like maybe Beat Saber. And again, refresh rate, 80 hertz on both machines. Um, because bumping the refresh rate up from 72 to 80 and then to 90 actually adds quite a bit of additional load. But usefully, it reduces the overall latency a little bit. The faster you refresh everything, the less input latency there is because it's checking or refreshing more often. But yeah, so that's how Virtual Desktop interacts with the Oculus render resolution slider. It doesn't. Uh, and that's how Virtual Desktop interacts with the Steam VR slider. It doesn't until you've connected your headset via Virtual Desktop and then you can go into Steam VR, and if you want to adjust the slider at that point, it does make a difference. Oh, so just to point out, whether you set your virtual desktop to low, medium, or high, those three resolutions, I'll put them up on the screen again now, um, those three resolutions there are what would then be 100% 
in Steam VR. So if you put it on medium in virtual desktop, you've connected your Quest, you've loaded up Steam VR, you go into settings and you go to render resolution. If you put the slider at 100% and you've set it medium in virtual desktop, the resolution will say 2016 by 2112. And obviously put it on low, it'll be 1728, put it on high, it'll be 2496. And that will be what your 100% is. And you could adjust it a little bit from there. So let's, in fact, let's say perhaps you can't quite run high, but on medium, you think you've got a fair bit of overhead still. You can actually, you could put it either on medium or on high, connect it up and then go into Steam VR and actually move the slider to somewhere in between. So perhaps you've got enough overhead to do more than 2016 by 2112, but not enough to do 2496 by 2592. Maybe you set it somewhere like, I don't know, 2200 by whatever the next one would be, 2200 and something as well. You know, you gain maybe a 5% you know, bump in pixels or whatever, or 10%, whatever it might actually be, and a little bit of extra sharpness because you can, you do have the ability to just fine tune it there. So not a bad option to have. And again, the same applies down the lower end. Maybe if you're on low, you've got plenty of overhead, but on medium, you're struggling a little bit to run your games on high, you know, move that slider somewhere in between. Find yourself a, find yourself a happy place to be with as far as your render resolution goes. But yeah, that's how it all works. Um, any questions, as always, stick them in the comments because it's what I'm here for. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try and find out and then tell you. And if I can't find out, then I won't tell you. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, take it easy.